Hello, I'm Ted Joya, and I'm doing a series of video talks on subjects related to music. Today I'd like to ask, is Miles Davis's Kind of Blue the greatest jazz album of all time? In recent years, a special status has been attached to Miles Davis's album Kind of Blue, an album he recorded back in 1959. So much so that when people are starting a jazz record collection or are beginning their interest in the music, they're told that this album is the place to start. They're told you begin with Kind of Blue and you move on from there. But this raises an obvious question. Why does this album achieve such special status? Is this really the best album in the history of jazz? It's interesting to note that this wasn't always seen as such a towering masterpiece. When the album first came out, it was well received, but it wasn't even the most famous or best-selling album in jazz in 1959. That same year, Dave Brubeck released his album, Time Out. And that was a huge seller, selling far more copies than Kind of Blue, and even produced the greatest hit single in jazz history, a song called Take Five, which achieved airplay. No other jazz song has matched since then. And even as you get into later years, it wasn't clear that Kind of Blue was some sort of special masterpiece in a class of its own. When I was coming of age in jazz, 20 years after the release of Kind of Blue, it was considered one of the great albums of jazz. But I think if you had surveyed people back then and said, what's the greatest jazz recording ever? I think many people would say, well, maybe A Love Supreme by John Coltrane or maybe the Louis Armstrong recordings from the 1920s, or the Charlie Parker dial sessions. So Miles Davis's Kind of Blue was great, but even back then it wasn't clear that it was in a class of its own. Finally, around the year 2000, things started to change. Around that time, Ashley Kahn wrote a book about Kind of Blue, explaining how the record was made and what ingredients went into achieving its greatness. And in subsequent years, this seemed to cement the consensus. So much so now that Kind of Blue is on a plateau. It's seen as a one of a kind, the starting point of your jazz record collecting activity, and the one album that you need to pay the most attention to. But is this really the case? Well, I will suggest that there are many good reasons to love Kind of Blue and some bad ones. Probably the best reason is just the quality of the musicians involved. This was, by any measure, one of the greatest jazz ensembles ever. You have Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Bill Evans, Cannonball Adderley. This was an extraordinary group. Also, this was one of the few times they recorded together. So if you want to hear this specific group, you need to start with Kind of Blue. But there are also bad reasons for singling out Kind of Blue. The worst one is this reluctance I see among many jazz fans today to listen to music recorded before the advent of high fidelity. Recording technology changed during the course of the 1950s. The introduction of Ampex tape was probably the single most significant shift, but what you find is the recordings made in 1959 sound a whole lot better than the recordings made in 1950 or 1940 or 1930. Finally, in the late 1950s, you have recordings that sound pretty much more or less like what you'd hear from a live jazz band. Because of that, I see jazz fans that really don't want to listen to that old scratchy music that wasn't recorded well. And because of this, they miss out on many of the greats in jazz, because a lot of great jazz musicians died in the mid-1950s. Charlie Parker, Clifford Brown, Art Tatum. And because they didn't record these beautiful high fidelity albums, for some reason they've been marginalized. But if I really wanted to pick the reasons why Kind of Blue deserves at least some consideration as special status, I'd look at a couple other factors that I think we need to pay attention to. First of all, Kind of Blue was one of the first jazz albums to really expose the benefits of creative tension within a jazz band. A few years before Kind of Blue, you almost always found musicians recording with other musicians who shared their same sensibilities 
and stylistic preferences. So bebop musicians would record with other bebop musicians. Dixieland musicians would record with other Dixieland musicians. But with Kind of Blue, you begin to sense this creative tension because the musicians are collaborating, but they're not exactly on the same page. And this becomes even more clear when you look at the future paths of the individual players on the session. A few years later, John Coltrane is off exploring avant-garde music. A few years later, Cannonball Adderley is doing hard bop and some funky music. A few years later, Bill Evans is doing a kind of chamber jazz. A few years later, Miles Davis is off doing jazz rock fusion. So you get a sense that even back at Kind of Blue, you had a collaboration, but you had a collaboration with personalities that had some degree of divergence. Now, there are a few other albums from the 1950s that carry this, but none quite with the resonance of Kind of Blue. And I think what we have learned in jazz is that creative tension is good for the music. And because we had this situation in which these players collaborated, but also had these subtle differences, and in many instances larger differences, this creative tension was beneficial to the music. So Kind of Blue is very valuable at giving us an insight into this. There's one other aspect of Kind of Blue that I think is important, deserves praise, and we should pay attention to. I know when I talk to jazz musicians in student situations, at colleges, at universities, one of the things I say to the student musicians is that you should pay attention to painters. Now, why do I say this? Well, in the last 50, 60, 70, 80 years, painters have increasingly focused more on style than technique. If you go to an art gallery in New York or London and you see the latest works of the painter, the thing that generally strikes you first is not so much the technical mastery, it's the vision on a specific style. The great painters understand that they need to exclude things in order to define their style. Now, jazz musicians obviously understand this to some extent, but jazz still is very obsessed with technique. Jazz is still very obsessed with virtuosity. I don't believe there's any other kind of music with the possible exception of classical music in which virtuosity and technical mastery are so valued. And this is why Miles Davis is so important and why Kind of Blue is so important. Because Miles thought like a painter. Miles thought in terms of style over virtuosity. And in fact, with Miles, you see something that you only find previously really in painters. If you know with Picasso, Picasso moved from a blue period to a rose period to a cubist period. And so Picasso's work would change dramatically from decade to decade. Miles Davis did this also, and more strikingly than any other jazz musician in history. And Kind of Blue really gives us that sense better than any of his other recordings, I suggest, because we had already seen Miles go from bebop to cool, and then with Kind of Blue, he's introducing elements of modal jazz, different ways of structuring jazz songs. And I could go into the details of these, but I think the larger picture is more important. Miles was making a very clear statement at this juncture in his career and saying, pay attention to style. Pay attention to what you leave out of the music. You don't have to put everything into it. And I think this is still a lesson we need to learn in jazz and in culture broadly defined. So I would suggest there are lessons we can learn from Kind of Blue almost better than from any other album. And so I have made my peace with this album. If you ask me, is this the GOAT, the greatest of all time? Well, I'm not exactly sure Miles has hit that mark, and there are other great albums I want you to pay attention to, but still, I understand this is a superior album. This is an amazing album. It's a remarkable milestone in our culture. So even if Kind of Blue is not clearly the greatest of all time, for my purposes, it's at least close enough for jazz.